Hello, agentpreneurs, and welcome to episode 78 of the Daily List Report. We've got an incredible workshop-oriented episode for you today, all about how to manage cash flow. We are continuing to live in times of great uncertainty, and the one thing that you can do right now is to make sure that you are preserving as much cash as possible. Today, we're going to have a familiar face on the show, Omri Friedel, who was our head of finance, and we're going to talk about how to get more cash in the door, how to reduce your expenses so you can save the cash that you have, and what other opportunities might be out there. We've been doing this a lot at List Reports to make sure that we preserve as much cash as possible because none of us know what the future holds. And as we move into these increasingly uncertain times, we want to make sure that cash is king and that we have as much cash as possible as a business. And Omri is going to join us. He's going to give us some great tips on exactly how to do that. While you're here, make sure you subscribe to this channel. And when you subscribe, make sure you click the little bell to be notified of all of our new episodes. We've got 77 episodes before this of really great content, many of which include Omri Friedel himself talking about the PPP loan and forgiveness and all kinds of amazing things to make sure that we are financially strong, each and every one of us. So without further ado, Omri, why don't you say hello to the agentpreneurs of List Reports? Hello, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well. Randy, nice to be on again. It's great to have you, Omri. Thank you for your time and, and frankly for being so diligent about always putting together some amazing presentations. So for all of you listening right now, the deck that we're about to go through is going to be made available in the comments. So we're going to have a link to it there so you can click on it. You can take your notes, but you'll have access to this deck and you can share it with anybody that you want. Omri, maybe you can tell us a little bit about what we've been doing at List Reports during the last few months. For sure. As soon as we, we noticed this was going to be quite a long-term event with a lot of unknowns, we focused extremely on how do we preserve cash. That is both on how do we ensure we collect the cash we need to collect, find additional sources of cash, and how we spend our cash and, and minimize that in order to ensure the longevity of the company and the safety and security of our employees and our clients to the extent that we can control it. And there's a lot of different ways that permeated, and I'm happily go through a few of these today uh, give you some examples, and I think it's going to be both personal and professional for our client community, and we can walk through, and hopefully it's helpful to everyone. I think it's going to be great, Omri. I think that, you know, from what I've heard from, you know, comments and, and our audience, they really love this very hands-on kind of tips and tricks, um, especially in this case around cash flow. So what I'm going to do, Omri, is why don't you go ahead and, you know, why don't you go through some of your slides here, and then I'll jump in if I have any questions, okay? Sounds good. As always, guys, we're going to try and keep it simple and direct, and I'm sure Randy will uh, address this later, but you can always reach out to me uh, through the channel, and I'll happily help if I can. Thanks, so as Omri. we said, it's very important to manage cash flows, both personally and professionally, and especially now in these times of uncertainty. We don't know how long the economic events will last. I personally think the economic offensive effects are only just beginning, so we're in for quite an interesting ride. And really, to be cash burdened, there's only two things to focus on, and this may sound simplistic, and that's what I always try to do. You got to focus on cash inflows and cash outflows. Obviously, increase the cash in and reduce the cash out. So, what can you do about cash inflows? First, you have to stay on top of your business. This may require extra time, but it's really needed to ensure timely cash flows. What does that mean in this world? Make sure whatever deals you have in progress are getting closed provide whatever further assistance you can provide in order to help out. And don't be afraid to get creative and adjust any service term or payment terms just to ensure that you're getting your cash at a quicker time frame and hence easing your cash burden. For example, what we did at, uh, at List Reports is we focus a lot on our AR collections process, especially with our larger clients. A lot of our smaller individual clients pass via credit card, not a big deal. We just charge the card as needed. But some of the larger ones, or there's an enterprise that, that is covering some of the bills, a lot of follow-up, some rearrangement of payment terms so that it smooths it out for everyone and there's benefit for everybody, but it really ensures that we we'll keep getting our cash. Another small nuance is because we all went to work remote or work from home, we had to change all our mailing addresses and, in, and institute a process where the mail is arriving at the people who are able to deposit any checks or to just avoid getting checks and, translate and transition to a different way to actually receive payments. Additionally, try and source additional income. From an individual perspective, it might be figuring out a new side gig or a new line of work, or just any way to earn any income, maybe provide a new service or product to the market, but you have to search, get creative on how you can do that and see if you can earn additional funds. 
what we did at List Reports is we're constantly launching new products and services that really are directed at addressing current market conditions and seeing how our product can improve the lives of our clients and help them do their business. And this is a short-term and a long-term help because obviously if the new products are successful, it's gonna help us short-term, but it does create a longer strategic proposition uh, over the long-term and hence provide a better product and service and hence create greater loyalty with the clients. And you can do something similar Again, it's not just about the now, it's about the now and the future to ensure you have a longer term solution in case something like this ever happens again. Also, seek other funding options. We talked about getting new income. The other alternatives, and we've discussed this in the past a couple of times, is debt. The two biggest items around debt were the PPP, which we've discussed a few times. Originally, that was set to expire June 30th for applications. That's been extended for another month. So you have until August 8th, August 8th, and there's still a lot of money available. I think it's way over 100 billion still, which is surprising. Additionally, the economic injury disaster loans are available again. Those are not forgivable necessarily like the PPP, but they have very favorable rates. And you could actually get both. Uh, also, unemployment benefits are available to 1099, 1099 employees, which was part of the CARES Act. I'll make a point that you cannot double dip between the Paycheck Protection Program and unemployment benefits, but depending on how you're set up, you may be able to obtain one or the other. Uh, again, make sure to consult your advisors and see what they think is best, depending on your specific situation. What we did, we got the PPP loan. We're now working to actively get it forgiven, but we're always evaluating whether other options make sense to us. One of them could be this EADL or something else that comes up. So we're always looking to ensure we have more cash coming in the door that is in line with the regulations and provides us the cash flow in order to support our business. The other side of it is cash outflows. Cash outflows obviously is how do you reduce your expenses and how much you're spending on things. And that is actually much more within your control. I fully recognize that saying, hey, go get another job or find another source of income is not the easiest thing, especially now. However, cat expense management and controlling how much you spend is almost entirely within your control. But you have to be brutally, brutally honest with yourself. It's not necessarily a pleasant process, but you have to go through it. You have to evaluate everything you're spending on regularly, and I do mean everything, and then make a determination of what you really need to spend on or invest in and what you don't, and then cut down everything you don't need to spend on. You can bring it back later when everything is recovered. You can learn to live without it, or you can adjust your life, but you have to make those changes in order to ensure you have the right amount of cash flow to survive and sustain what you need to sustain over this time frame. At List Reports, we did this with all of our business expenses. For our client community, such as yourselves, that's probably a combination of business and personal expenses. And I know we encourage a lot of our employees to evaluate their own personal lives and how they're spending money. And I encourage everyone here to do the same. And we're gonna go through a few examples of, of what we've done and what you can do at home. One is the monthly subscriptions. We all have them now. It's frankly how a lot of companies make money these days. A few of the simple one, storage. Everybody's paying Apple or Google or Microsoft for something. You probably don't need all different, all of those services. Same for music. I certainly know we have subscriptions to SiriusXM, to Pandora, there's Apple Music and all of them. Do you really need all those different services? That generally you have and you don't necessarily notice. Another one is all the entertainment ones. Do you really need them? And while all of those seem small, they actually aggregate up to quite a lot of money pretty quickly. At List Reports, we did this across our entire software stack. And we use a lot because we use it for different businesses. Things like Zoom or Slack, which are used for communication, to different workflow, such as Jira, uh, Trello, and Asana. And we cut a bunch of them down and, and incurred savings that are amounting to, at this stage, well north of a couple hundred thousand dollars a month of just pure focus on being able to, to save money. Another thing is reduce the nice to haves. So travel and gas, well, positive note is nobody has to drive anywhere or certainly driving has been reduced. So the amount of gas you spend has, has certainly gone down. But other stuff, the morning coffee run, any water delivery services or pet services, gyms, eating out, all of those things are really not necessary. They're nice to haves. It's great, but they're not always necessary. Cleaning services is another one of those. Maybe you're able to change the cars you currently drive and reduce one of the larger personal expenses that, that exists. What we've done here, we've completely cut down all of our travel and entertainment. Different foods that used to be covered by the company are no longer covered. 
travel is on hold, and that has contributed a significant amount of savings to the organization as a whole. And I suggest you do the same at home. I know we certainly have it in, in our family. I know some people have done it same as well. Here, yes. And this is where we found a lot of success is talking to your vendors. I always believe that everybody wants to help and everybody's looking for ways to help. But in order for them to help, you actually have to ask for it, even though that might not seem like something you want to do. We reached out, my team and I, to everyone we possibly could, be it the banks, be it the, the landlords, be it different software vendors that we work with, any of our suppliers. And to the extent we could expense on hold, we did it. To the extent we could renegotiate, we did. And to the extent we could cut, we did. Some examples, we helped our employees um, defer rent or defer mortgage payment through getting in touch with landlords and their banks. We defer car lease payments or car loan payments. I know utility companies are offering a lot of different assistance. One very important point here, all of these things have an impact. I don't expect anything to be given away for free, although it would be nice, it usually does not happen. But if you do get your rent deferred, it usually means you're paying it off at some point in the future. For us, we got a, some of our rent deferred, but we're repaying it in future months. So it eased the cash burden right now, but it did not eliminate the full cash burden. But it was certainly very helpful for us. Uh, we also were able to renegotiate several agreements partially on pricing and partially on payment terms, meaning instead of paying up front, we could change it to paying monthly or paying quarterly, which again, it eases the cash burden and allows you to better manage your cash flow. So those are a few examples. Omri, if you go through everything you're spending on, you can probably find some at home. Omri, let me just interject here. Oh, let me just ask you a question, right? I think that for some people, the, the fear, the uncertainty, the doubt, right? causes them when it comes in particular to to their financial situation to kind of go into a bit of a shell. And I think what's really critical here, and I think you're making this point, is that if you can't pay, you can't pay. Everybody wants to get paid. And, and now by, probably more than ever, people are being flexible, right? And so the critical thing here, right, is that if you're having any hardship, that you don't just disappear. Because if you're not talking to your partners, to your vendors, to your creditors, then they're going to assume the worst. If you're talking to them, they are going to be flexible with you. And we've seen that time and time again, right, Omri? Absolutely. People are looking to help. If you're going to go silent, they're going to assume the worst, as you said, Randy. Mm -hmm. They're going to think you don't want to pay. They're going to think you're playing some sort of game. And eventually, if you're not paying, everybody knows the situation. There's nothing to really hide here. And frankly, I think everybody's in the same boat. I think everybody right now, maybe not everybody, but the vast majority are in a situation where cash flow has been reduced, their income has been reduced, the amount they're earning has been reduced. The expense base doesn't just disappear. The expense base you need to work on and you need to make sure and you need to be very vigilant about. And part of that is talking to people. On a personal level, we deferred lease payments on one of them for a few months. Very easy to do. The company was very willing to work with us. Do I have to pay it off in the future? Absolutely we do, but it is the current cash flow for the past three months and it was very helpful. And I'll be honest, I don't think everyone will react the same. Maybe the landlords will be nice, maybe they won't. It's gonna be case by case. But you have to ask, and there's nothing to be ashamed about. Everybody got into this situation for reasons well beyond their control. Yes. So it is what it is. Figure out what you can control, which I think is one of my points in, in, in the last, uh, one of the last uh, presentations like this we had. And one thing you can control is how you relate to people, how you talk to them about the situation and figure out how they can help you. And similarly, maybe you're able to help them and, and come up to a net positive for everyone. Absolutely, absolutely. And and Amri, I wanna make one other point to all of our agents out there watching this right now, which is this is another opportunity, not just for you to look at your own cash flow, right? And how to make sure that you're in the strongest position possible. But the messages here that Amri is talking about are a great opportunity for you to talk to your sphere, right? So in particular, right, consumers might think about this differently than a business owner. And so these are great messages and lessons to be able to teach to your sphere to make sure that they are making the right decisions as it relates to their own individual and personal cash flow, because we know tens of millions of people have lost their jobs and unemployment exactly. benefits are starting to run it out, at least the extended unemployment benefits. And they may or may not be extended, but this is a really challenging time. So these are great messages and opportunities for you to reach out and make sure that you're taking care of your sphere. So Omri, thanks for that. Why don't you go ahead and continue? Of course. Also adopt a new philosophy. And this might be an interesting one. And it's probably very odd for small, for very small businesses, 
uh, entrepreneurs or individual proprietors, and certainly at a personal level. Large organizations always have processes that just make it hard to buy things. If you think of a big bank, if you ever want to buy anything in a big bank, you have to get approval, you have to procure it, you have to source it with multiple vendors, you have to evaluate it, and finally you can spend the money. And sometimes it seems very silly. But the idea overall is right. Before you spend it, make sure what you're spending on actually makes sense and is needed. Um, and you can implement something like that at home or for your own business. And whether or not you really need to buy a new phone or you need to go out to that restaurant or take that trip right now. Essentially, I'm saying ask for approval. And some of us may joke that there is somebody in the family that has the overriding approval. And sometimes that's a good thing, but it can eliminate a lot of unnecessary expenses. Could be just a simple coffee, could be something more substantial. And as you look at it, maybe you don't need to spend the money here or there. And eventually that aggregates a significant amount of savings. We instituted it at List Reports and essentially Several approvals are needed in order to spend new money. It's not because we don't trust the employees or we don't want to invest them or have them invest in what they need. We just want to make sure it's the right thing to spend on at this point in time and that we're getting the right return from that investment. It's a simple question of, do I really need it and am I really going to benefit from what this is or should I save the money for something else? So it's an odd one. That's why I kind of put a winky face over there. <laughs> we kind of adopt this new philosophy and see if that helps you out. Other things, a lot of tax benefits came out and I can't speak to all of them, nor am I going to pretend I know all of them as an expert, but consult your advisors and your CPA to see what it is you might be eligible for. One of the examples I do put on here, you can potentially withdraw from your IRA, IRA without any tax consequences, which is different. If you ever had to do that before, you would have gotten penalized and taxed harshly. This won't happen now as long as you repay it. Hopefully it does not come to that, but it is another option in part of getting creative. Additionally, all these changes to work from home, you may have additional deductions that you can take or figure out what it is you really use to work and hence have a more beneficial tax return later this year if you haven't filed yet, which is actually due tomorrow, I believe, or in a couple of days, yeah, or, or next year. So consult people as the, as the different things that came up with the CARES Act are actually very, very beneficial. And you need to look at them, understand them, and see if that helps you out, as they will have significant cash impact. Everybody or a lot of people got a check. It's helpful. It's not necessarily the greatest amount of money, but it certainly helps. Um, I think we discussed unemployment earlier. So there are different options as, as to what you can look for. As a quick summary, I know this was probably a bit quicker than before. We're trying to keep it simple. Number one, evaluate what you spend on and whether it's really needed. Be honest with yourself. Look at all your expenses, even if you don't like the answer. Talk to all your vendors, get in touch with them, have an open dialogue and communication, see if they can help you out in any sort of fashion. Have an approval mechanism, add a layer, it might save you a lot of money. Seek additional cash inflows. I know I'm saying as if, as if it's simple, but I know it's not simple, but it doesn't mean you can't creatively think of how it is you can potentially earn more funds. And one of the other things, and we didn't touch on it as much, but I do think it's important, Look for opportunities to help others. Times like these, just like anybody here might be reaching out to different people to ask for help, somebody might be asking you for help in some sort of fashion. Look for those opportunities to help others and make that investment. And I believe, I firmly, firmly believe that's going to pay off in multiple ways in the future that you can't really account for or know, but I think it's very important. Hopefully this has been helpful. Uh, Always happy to be on the show, Randy, and I'm, and I'm really hoping this is uh, of value to anyone who's watching. Uh, Omri, it's tremendously helpful. I think a couple things. One is that last point you, you made there, right? Look for opportunities to help others. I think you've embodied this on the show, right? You've, you've answered questions that, that people have had. You've been really generous with your time, even in creating this amidst all the other things that you have to do. And the other point that you made, which I, I really liked, is this evaluate what you spend and whether it's needed. But you said be honest with yourself and your needs as you look at all expenses, even if you don't necessarily like the answer. I think that's a really important point. And I, I have seen time and time again, people who are not in a good situation just turn a blind eye to the whole thing. And there is a general lack of understanding of the incremental, as you put it, right, the incremental savings, the extra $7 a month on Google storage, right? Whatever it is that this stuff, frankly, 
over months and years adds up to a significant amount of money and the lost interest you could have earned on that. Like people don't understand the compounding effect of this. And so what a great opportunity to make sure that you take an honest look at your own finances, but you're also there for others who might be going through some hardship. So I think those are really, Absolutely. really salient points, Omri. Hopefully it's helpful. And as you said, Randy, each, each one of these little things has what we call an opportunity cost. Hmm. If you've spent $10 on Starbucks on any given morning, you haven't saved that money and you haven't spent it on something else and that money is gone. So it's always those little questions. And again, the answers are not necessarily what you want. Yes, I want a massage. Yes, I want a vacation. Yes, I want this or that. It's not necessarily the right thing at this time. Alternatively, you're looking for help others. Maybe you can prepay for some food from different places to help the local businesses stay in business and be there when you come back. And then it's a bit of a give and take for, for the entire community. But as, as, as we've said, be honest with yourself, look at what you're spending. And those are really the two big ones, the number one and the number five, and try to help others through this time frame. I think that's great advice, Omri. Omri, thank you so much for putting this together. Um, thank you for your time today, and thank you for being back on the show. Anytime. Always happy to be on, and everyone stay safe out there, and looking forward to seeing you again in the future. Very soon, I'm sure. We'll see you soon, Omri. Thank you. Bye. Well, that was fantastic as always. Um, so again, this deck is linked below uh, in the comments in the show description, so you can access it, share it with others. Um, if you have any questions, you know, reach out, right? We'll answer, Omri will answer directly. He's done that in the past and he's been really great and gracious with this time in doing that. Um, and you know, if you've made it this far, then this topic is of interest to you. So what other kinds of topics in and around finance could we cover? Um, you know, Omri's been great and generous with his time and we, we can do other shows like this. So let us know what you want to learn more about and we can look at putting together a show uh, that covers that topic. So until tomorrow, be safe, be healthy, be happy, and we'll see you soon.